Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Married at First Sight Australia, season 11, episode 37, The Reunion. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. So we're gonna do a quick little catch up on the couples that are still together as of the filming. Okay, so we have, well, first, it's been a month since filming wrapped for them. So uh, since then, we have Jade and Ridge who have shared I love yous, and they still plan on moving in in about two months now. Problem is, it has been exposed. Thank you guys on Discord. I think it was Waddles specifically, but um, Ridge. <laughs> He's a dirty stinking cheater, <gasps> apparently. And I'm gonna link the article below cause I'm not gonna read it. There's a lot going on. Um, apparently he was dating two women prior to coming on the show, broke up with them to come on the show, was still fraternizing either with them or with other women during the show and apparently got two women pregnant with the plan of getting a third pregnant, allegedly. I'm gonna link the article. There are texts to coincide all these allegations. Wow, <laughs> like, wow. I knew it pained me for a reason that he was my favorite husband. I knew, I knew. So, mm, Ridge, crazy. Moving on, we have Jaden and Eden who are still together, still in love and are planning their future together. Jack has apparently had a self-development journey and uh, he feels he's in a better place and he is now Tori's boyfriend. Yeah, so that's interesting. And then lastly, Sarah and Tim, they are together for right now. We'll get into that drama. So as we know, Jonathan and Lauren obviously did not end up together and uh, Jonathan had made it seem like him and Ellie just they weren't there was nothing going on there's nothing going on between them however they are now official and they are showing up to the party together this is the happiest I've been in one of these cars I'm so glad we don't have to live in a secret anymore mm, you had to kiss a toad <laughs> you had to slay a dragon I had to slay a dragon <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in heaven it's <laughs> You know, them reveling in their relationship is weird to me. Obviously you want to be happy in your own relationship, but the way that this came to be, the way that they're so smug about it, it's so weird. And it's weird because of Ellie for me. Of course, Jonathan was the one who had the responsibility of being loyal in his marriage. However, Ellie, like, if y'all had a script, cool. But the man completely downplayed your relationship, downplayed his attraction to you, basically made it seem like any kind of romantic, whatever, suspicion would be coming from delusional people because there's absolutely nothing there at all. He, She's not my type, I'm not attracted to her. Just for y'all to pull up together and you're like, this is the happiest I've ever been in my life. It's embarrassing. It's honestly embarrassing. Anyways, Jonathan, um, to me, is acting like a completely different person. And it proves Lauren right when she said something about Jonathan is fake. His emotions are curated. Everything is just perfect. Everything is honky dory. He's not real. And as the episode goes on, Jonathan says that it's Lauren who's not real. Listen, I don't know. I wasn't there when they were filming, but Lauren did call him out a long time ago saying his feelings are inauthentic. He's not being true to himself. And now we're seeing the real Jonathan and I'm inclined to side with Lauren, just saying. So once they arrive at the dinner party, obviously the entire room erupts. Some people already knew, some people are genuinely confused. <laughs> did you not know? No. <laughs> They're a couple. They are a couple. That is wild. <laughs> Hi, Ellie. <laughs> Hi, Ellie. Uh, where's the bar? If you've got my sloppy seconds. You can say, like, hi to me. Like, I've got no issue with the girl, but now I do. Now it's a problem. She has no right to be upset. And if she is, I don't really give a Do you think that you should have given Laura the heads up? 
No, Ellie is a beautiful, lovely human and Lauren is the opposite of that. This man says that Lauren has no right to be upset and she is a horrible human being and that Ellie is miles ahead when it comes to the good human being department. I mean, feel how you feel about Lauren. Some people, you know, don't sympathize with her because she's very brash. She's vulgar and stuff like that. But let's just put it into perspective, okay? She came in very guarded. And it seemed that after a while, her walls were coming down for Jonathan. When she went away to get her surgery, they came back together and slept together. If you are sleeping with me after a surgery, I am in a very vulnerable position and you're doing this under the guise of mending our relationship yet simultaneously, you're entertaining another woman. I'm sorry, I have the right to be upset. I generally have the right to be upset. I, I just, like, you were in this to be in a relationship. You were here saying, I wanna mend this relationship. You slept with her. And I would assume that wasn't the only time because they made it seem like that reignited their sexual relationship. You slept with her knowing you had no intention of actually being with her. That's sick. That's sick, twisted, and disgusting. Oh! And I know there's going to be some men in the comments because I've seen them before whenever I talk about Lauren who are going to say, well, she deserved it. Let's move on. So Lucinda wants to address the tension because obviously it's very awkward. She is being fair and she says that she's happy for Jonathan and Ellie that they found each other, but she can't help acknowledge that Lauren is hurting. Everyone says that I'm glowing and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just the tan. <laughs> I feel great with Nono. Yeah, I just feel so good when I'm with him. I wouldn't change anything. Should I have a kiss? Yeah. I feel like I've known him for such a long time. I'm so happy. So many times she said it on the couch that, you know, she has no feelings for Jono. So that gave you a right that to then message him the whole time? I'm Maybe not saying that. Them. Lauren, are you hurt? Are you hurt? Is that you one? Yeah. Ever. I'm so frankly. I don't understand where the tears are coming from. You are, you're the nastiest person I've ever met in my life, Lauren. You are, right. you are horrible. Honestly, at this point, I'm starting to think that Lauren, not Lauren, um, Ellie and Jonathan are a good match. They're both purposely being obtuse to the situation. Purposefully. You know what was going on between Lauren and Jonathan. You know what you were doing was inappropriate. You know rubbing it in her, rubbing it in her face is not going to feel good. And you're here like, are you hurt? Lauren is better than me because the way I would have dove over that table, are you kidding? I wouldn't have done that. I'm really not that combative, but how dare you ask me if I'm okay? And how dare you, Jonathan, tell me I'm not actually her. I'm just faking it. I am gobsmacked, honestly. They both say that Lauren doesn't really care. And I just, I, child, I don't know. I don't know. Um, at the very least, even if she doesn't care on a level of, wow, I had really strong feelings for him, she's embarrassed. I would feel for somebody who's embarrassed, you know? But again, some of the people would argue that that's her just desserts. I don't know. I just, Jonathan and Ellie, very unbecoming of them, the way that they're acting. So they're both saying that there was absolutely nothing between them, but Ben pipes up. And he begs to differ. It was a large volume of communication. Yeah. For you to say to me, there was nothing there and it just evolved. There was, I'm sorry. The text messages and you said they were just friendly. They there were. was clearly intent because you guys are together now. I didn't get any flirty vibes off Jono. It was literally gossip about like the dinner parties and commitment ceremony. You go, I think Jono likes me. Yeah, you no, said I, said, that yeah, I said, I think he has a crush on me. Yeah, oh. you did. Oh. All you did was just bad mouth me, try to put me down. And that's why. It makes sense. There was no intent in the messages. There wasn't. Um, I don't care. Don't, don't what you act think. like that was friendly. I left the experiment on week five. <laughs> what? Are you serious? So I just want to get this straight. There was nothing between y'all during the experiment, right? All the texts were just friendly. 
And then a week after the, the show ended, you wanted to pursue things with her romantically. That's when you initiated some kind of romantic relationship. And in two weeks, post-experiment, you became an official... Co- in two weeks. In two weeks. You became an official couple. To say that there was nothing between them, it's, it's just not true. It is just not true. Maybe you didn't cross the line, but there was something there. There was something there. Whether it was a, a, a flirty friendship or something, there was something there to jump off of. You can't say that through those entire six weeks or however long they were in the experiment, he never had any kind of feelings towards Ellie Bull. Absolute bull, okay? Absolute bull. So I'm here thinking the way that Jonathan has been talking throughout this episode, there's a dark side to him that's so nasty and cruel. And at first I was thinking, wow, Ellie, like you want to be with a guy like this? But she is nasty and cruel too. There's a dark side to both of them. And it's interesting because I really felt for Ellie in her relationship because Ben would literally gaslight her. He would make her feel like whatever she was experiencing was not real. She would question her reality and this experiment. Um, The way that she would constantly make excuses for him, I'm thinking, is she really this much of a walkover? No, she's just like Jonathan. They were both putting up a front. And he's here like, oh, Lauren is just faking it. He is faking it. I'm not going to say that Lauren is not faking it because I don't know that to be true. But we know for a fact that Jonathan was being fake in this process. And he's like, well, you know, years ago I decided to be a better man and I'm not that kind of guy anymore. Liar. Just a liar. So fake. He's so like cruel the way that he speaks. And Ellie is just the same. So, well, (laughs) Here we go. This whole naive, docile thing of Ellie, obviously just a performance. So Jonathan doesn't appreciate the peanut gallery weighing in on his situation. So he decides to sink somebody else, okay? And he's like, well, Sarah, let me tell you about your man, Tim. If he did have that time, he would have made a different decision. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, man, I didn't think this was gonna come up. No, you, you're would've... sorry? Yeah. You brought it up. <laughs> he knows everything, apparently, this guy. <laughs> It was a hectic, it was a hectic roller but that's coaster. A, but that's, a, that's you saying that you would have said no. Tim, you don't think you deserve better than Sarah? We all do. Wow. So like maybe if I had more time and really analyzed it, that's what I, that's what I was saying. Maybe I, could, I might have come to a different decision. You vent to a man, you tell me what you feel. Don't blindside me in front of everybody like that. What am I supposed to do if I've got uncertainties? You, know, you talk like, to me about it. That's I, what you should do. You, you shouldn't talk. It. I, no, I no, them with no. Them. I always thought that Tim was buying time. So finding out that he was still on the fence and he thinks that if given more time, maybe the answer would have been different doesn't surprise me at all. Now, this might be an unpopular opinion. I actually don't think there's an issue with the wavering. I think the issue here is the fact that he told Tim and not Sarah. So I'm one of those people. I feel like I'm going to get a flogging, but I'm going to say it anyways. I'm one of those people where in a relationship, say you're starting to have a wandering eye or you're starting to feel unappreciated, which naturally makes us gravitate to people who make us feel appreciated, which often leads to cheating, right? I feel like there's no problem addressing that with your partner. Having that transparency with your partner, is it hard? Absolutely. What person wants to hear that you are having feelings or or you're having a desire for something outside of their relationship? Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. But what I would rather hear is, hey, babe, I'm struggling with this rather than, oh, I already did this. Please forgive me. So if you are wavering, if you're unsure about your feelings, like, let's talk about it. Let's air it out. And If that would have led to Sarah saying, well, then I don't even want to proceed with somebody who's not sure about me. That's her prerogative. I don't think it's fair for Tim to say, well, I didn't say it because you were going to end things with me. Don't take away that choice from me. I don't like that. I don't like that. But I'm not surprised that Tim hasn't been transparent because through this whole season, I've been saying that this man holds on to how he really feels about things. And then it blows up when things come to a head. And here we are. It's happening again. And I'm thinking, at what point are you going to decide to be transparent? Because there's a difference between honesty and transparency. Because with honesty, if I ask you something and you tell the truth, you're being honest. Transparency is I don't even have to ask you. You're just going to be forthright with that information. 
So come on, sir. I also wrote this in my notes and forgot to say it. I would be remiss if I didn't. Sarah's outbursts are very concerning. Very, very concerning. In this case, I wouldn't necessarily say justified, but I can understand why she is so irritated. The way in which she expresses that irritation is not okay. And if they're having this many blow ups, public blow ups, so early in their relationship, I can only imagine what things look like when it's just the two of them, when Ish actually hits the fan. So, yeah, I mean, I'm with you in, on the principle, but the execution of your frustration, girl, no. And this isn't no, oh, I'm just a feisty Latina. No, girl, you need help. Get help. Also, Jonathan did some some crafty wording because it's not like he said he would make a different decision. He was just saying it could have been a different decision. But anyways, Tim is now upset with Jonathan because he's causing issues in his relationship. Timothy says, listen, I'm happy where I am now. <laughs> I'm happy where I am now. You make it seem like it's wishy-washy, like things are so you're not on, okay. You're you on. do it all the time. You don't say the stupidest shit. And learn oh, from you, it. I learn do, from yeah. it. Listen, I do. Okay, then and learn from it. it. It's okay. Stop yelling. Out of every single time, like someone's, you just talk shit to, to everyone, you know, like share shit. Look, I know that you're upset at this whole situation coming out, and I, I'm sorry <laughs> that it's come out like this. It's just a shame, you know, like we're going so well. I'm like, oh, damn. Are like, you decisive pressing. about being with me? No, I'm not. I can't and believe this happened. That was hilarious. <laughs> Jonathan was clearly trying to bring somebody else down. It doesn't seem like he was successful because in the next episode, they're going to be together. Um, not Miss, uh, what's her name? Not Miss Cass going at it with Sarah. Anyways, let me get back on track. Um, yes, Jonathan was trying to sink Tim just to bring somebody else down with him. However, I still think that it was up to Tim to disclose this information to Sarah. I just do. Um, Tim has this thing of confiding in other people. And if the person in your relationship can't be your safe space, maybe you need to examine that relationship. Just saying. What else do I have here? He holds on to things and then they explode at the most inopportune times. Yeah. Uh, we've seen that happen in the next episode. It does seem like they want to mend things. Cassie has some, her name is Cassie, right? Cass? Yeah, Cassandra has a vendetta with Sarah. We're yet to find out what that is. I keep, and I keep cutting it out in all my videos, but I'm going to keep it in this time. I wish I kept my first impression of Sarah because from the beginning, I felt that something about Sarah was inauthentic. So to hear Cassandra say, everything you say is fake. I wonder where this is coming from because I had the same impression of Sarah from my first impressions video, not even from the first episode. So I wonder what that's about. It seems like Tori's gonna have some kind of revelation, child, too little, too late. <laughs> like, at this point, I don't care. I can't even be happy for you because you should have left that man ages ago. What else is gonna happen? Jonathan's feet gonna be held to the fire? He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He has no empathy. The man is just, he disgusts me, but anyways. Yeah, it seems like Ridge is going to get away with uh, his situation. Obviously, the, the news only came out recently. So I wonder when Jade found out. Do y'all think it happened? Oh, <gasps> do y'all think this lady found out after they were already living together? If they got to that point, I would be sick. Oof. Anyways, we're going to have to wait and see what happens at the... Uh, um, the final couch session. So as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.